Bitcoin is hope. Okay, so let me say it a different way. If your family has a hundred thousand dollars and you showed up, you know, today, and I told you it was in a bank in Lebanon, and now it's twenty thousand, but you can't spend it, and it's going to zero. What's your family's morale? So it's not not necessarily oh have people disagreed with you because right now also you look like a genius you bought the thing the brand is up the stock is up the bitcoin price is up like if you really disagree now this is your own personal problem at this point the strategy has clearly worked up till now the question is more that hey we've had periods of time i've been holding bitcoin since 2013 2014 and i've seen bitcoin go down you know 70 80 percent drawdowns and you have basically uh taken out a bunch of debt you bought Bitcoin, you own $5 billion of Bitcoin. The majority of the company's value is the Bitcoin that it, the assets that it owns. And if we do see, I, I think we, we kind of agree volatility will dampen over time, but that doesn't mean we can't see a drawdown like that again. What happens when Bitcoin price drops by 50% again? Um, you know, what's your reaction to that? How, you know, how does that affect your strategy or what's your overall viewpoint? I can't see any downside for the employees. They've all benefited. I can't see any downside for the investors that stayed with us. They've all benefited. Right? I mean, there are critics out there that don't like Bitcoin. There are, there are people that will say operating companies shouldn't have assets. Right? There's, a, like a, there's criticism. People say, well, you're a CEO. You should go back to your cubicle and write software and leave the investing to the professionals. But I think that the, the fundamental elephant in the room here is that the macroeconomic environment is so incredibly unfair to people without assets. Like literally, if you're an operating company or a Main Street company, you have to work 30% harder to stand still. And if you're a Wall Street company, you can stand still and get 30% more. Like the, the playing field is so tilted in favor of property owners or asset holders against manufacturers and, and companies that, that do things that you, you can't really be successful in business unless you have assets as part of your strategy. And so, so okay, so me and Sam were asking different questions. Sam wanted to know more about the morale. I want to know if we do see another Bitcoin, you know, crash, draw, but draw down 50%, 60%, uh, what happens to your position and uh, what happens to your, your point of view? Well, we, we, we have permanent capital, so it doesn't make a difference to us, right? Like right now, for example, we have a $3 billion investment gain. So if you cut Bitcoin in half, we would still have an investment gain. Right. I mean, our basis is twenty four thousand. So if it goes down to less than twenty four thousand and stays there forever, then it will have not been a good investment, I suppose. But otherwise, we, we've got a long term strategy, which is you buy it and hold it. And, and I think that a lot of people live in fear of volatility, but a lot of people live in fear of a lot of things. Right. If you're if you have enough fear, you won't leave your house. You won't right. do anything, and so you have to have a bit of courage and conviction. I, I can give you a thousand reasons why I think it makes sense to invest in Bitcoin. I I can't give you any reason why why I should be afraid to do a rational thing. So you know it do, it doesn't really bother me right there's this is a rational strategy if i had it to do all over again would i of course i would <laughs> right ask all the investors that made billions and billions of dollars you know over the time frame right of course you would do it again uh and i think we're gonna we're gonna have to wrap uh based on time so appreciate you coming on how, how much do you think bitcoin.com is worth roger Ver owns it now how much would you be paying for bitcoin.com i don't know <laughs> i i wouldn't speculate <laughs> i wouldn't speculate you know i think for most people a lot of what you're saying i think is going to be uh over their heads that listen to this to be, to be perfectly honest with you um i think but but I could distill it down into a very simple a simple way of looking at it for anybody that listened to this and they were intrigued but they didn't know they haven't you know sort of gone down the rabbit hole yet, which is very simply, 
If guys like Michael Saylor, who own public companies that um, have a ton of money, are worried about what they're gonna do because their money is melting, uh, and they're looking for, you know, investment grade, you know, uh, sort of uh, the, the, the most powerful treasury asset, and he's decided it's Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, Square has put some money in, PayPal has put money in, um, Tesla has put a billion and a half dollars into, into Bitcoin. Um, it's likely that there are more companies out there and it'll take them six months to a year to make this move, but they will take a portion of their treasury reserves and they'll move it into Bitcoin. And these are long-term holders. These are not retail day traders that are going to be, you know, buying and selling the thing like crazy. So uh, the real simple thing is you can sort of invest into the network. You can buy Bitcoin yourself and you can front run the institutions that are coming. Uh, that was a very simple very simple thesis, a very simple takeaway for somebody who's listening to this. If you're a company, you better be thinking about what you're going to do with the cash. If you're an individual person, you should also be thinking about what you're going to do with your cash. And the easy move is that for once you get to front run the institutions and you get to get in before they all get in. Whereas typically the retail investor is last. I, I think that's a, it's a, a reasonable thing to say. I agree with it. Another big picture way to say it is there's $100 trillion of treasury assets that have a negative real yield of minus 10 to minus 15% a year. That means they're, they're destroying $10 trillion a year of value. The solution is convert all of that money into Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a trillion dollar asset. The, you know, people that understand Bitcoin think it's going to grow to become the $10 trillion asset that gold is. And then it's going to replace negative yielding sovereign debt and then corporate debt. And, and ultimately, it will become the primary treasury reserve network and treasury reserve asset. And so if you have a company, if you're an investor, it makes sense to buy it because it's got a brilliant future and it solves a problem that everybody on Earth has. And if you're a company, it makes sense to plug your treasury into Bitcoin because the road to serfdom is working exponentially harder for a currency growing exponentially weaker, right? You're just going to work yourself to death. You know, put yourself in a position of working as hard as you can in Venezuela or Argentina or Zimbabwe and roll the clock forward a decade and ask yourself the question, what do you wish you did? And the answer is protect your assets, protect your, your monetary energy, your treasury, by putting it into a scarce asset in a bank in cyberspace where no one can steal it, debase it, or destroy it. And, and that's the Bitcoin ethos. We're simply trying to, we're trying to make it worthwhile to do the other stuff. There's no point in doing a hundred million other things if at the end of the journey, you've got nothing to show for it.